Right, morning guys, or afternoon for those in Malta. Uh, thanks for joining. Uh, this is our third um, webinar of this little series that we've started. As we, as I said before, usually face to face, but made it very difficult at the moment. So we're doing webinars, which uh, have been very successful actually. I've mean, been quite, quite staggered with it. Nothing that we've done before. Um, so we've got, I'll see if we've got here, looking at participants. Uh, we have got oh, seven from Malta, and we've got twelve from the UK. So, uh, and quite a few people I know and love, and quite a few people who I don't know. So, welcome to those I don't know. Uh, thanks for joining. Really appreciated it. Uh, I tell you what, we're going to talk about business process automation. Sounds boring, yeah? Nothing of the kind. This is a real business game changer, and I think we're going to go on today as an example is onboarding and offboarding of staff sounds dull why is it involved with it isn't it an hr function but it's a business function yeah and let's just think about this when you when you turn up at a new company what happens yeah some people turn up and they got their laptop i'm jumping straight in here by the way guys i should have done i'm going to jump back can you jump through sorry guys it's a bit me really Jürgen, can you just put it, can you click it through? Uh, add a game. Yeah, so really business automation, reduce your cost, greater efficiency, streamline, you can all read, risk reduction, yeah? It's fairly simple. Uh, but we're going to show you what we've done to put it in practice into banking and to our gaming, yeah? But it, to be honest, it doesn't matter what business you are as long as you have got staff working for you. Yeah, so it's... Um, now, one of the things that we find with companies, they don't get, they spend all of their effort on recruiting. Got to get the right person. We found her, we found the best person, she is superb. And then, bang, you've got eight weeks, because she's on two weeks notice. What happens then? Often nothing, yeah? They might set up the, the her on the payroll, things like that. Uh, if she's not in IT, IT departments are often, often not even told about told about it so what actually happens then just think about how this works and if you've joined a company in the last year two years whatever it may be or you've worked for years and years you probably recognize this um can you flip one further jürgen please yeah you probably recognize jürgen could you speak yeah um yeah yeah, yeah if we can flip one further please jürgen and when you join the company what happens? It's you're excited, you're going to succeed, you really want to make a difference. It's the business. You don't join a business because you think, I know what I'll do. I'm going to stay here for four months and then go and find another one. You join here because you think it's the right company for you and you're going to make a difference and you're going to do well. Well, you turn up, so you turn up at a business and you want to get going. You're thinking, yeah, this is great. I'm going to meet people. I'm going to know what I need to do. I know what success looks like. Yeah. Actually, you turn up, and what's happened? You ain't got a laptop. What's happened? You, you haven't even got a desk. HR have taken you on, your manager's taken you on, but that's where the process falls down, and, and really falls down. So you turn up, you've been told to turn up at 10, and everyone's thinking at nine, or someone's joining at 10. So it works from the other side. And then 10 o'clock turns up, oh, she's in reception. Oh, could, can you go down, so I'm not ready for her. Where's your laptop? And we well, haven't got a laptop. No one's asked us to get a laptop. Can you phone up IT? So you phone up the centre, they've got a laptop. We haven't got any spare. So you're thinking, right, okay. So you send somebody else down. Oh, take for a coffee, spend an hour with them. Now, how does that look to the person? It looks shocking, I tell you. You turn up and you're thinking, oh, this is a bit of a shower, isn't it? This is not what I was expecting. I was expecting this slick company who interviewed me to be actually. To, to move this forward, me turn up, you should have a desk, you should have your phone, you should have your login, you should have your laptop, you should have your monitor, you should have your keyboard, you should have, wouldn't it be great if you, if you came in, they did a little cultural induction at 10, you met the MD or whoever it may be, or your boss, 11 o'clock, you're introduced to your, your people, this is all a process, yeah, but it doesn't work usually. 
if you you look at what um who is it nintech said in america uh 82 percent of onboarding fails and that has a direct uh impact on on uh, keeping staff you know it, and if that onboarding is broken you're not going to keep staff so 82 percent of people have see it's a bad thing glassdoor found that strong onboarding can improve retention rates as much as 82 percent yeah so they they mirror each other so really you should be able to walk into a company you've got your laptop and actually you've got all of your logins and those logins are correct they should have your email address correct the same standards as the rest of the business they should you should only have access where you're allowed it yeah but what happens it i mean who's there there's frank there who i know has been doing this sort of thing for years yeah there's uh there's chris there Yan's over there you've all employed people taking people on and not known about it they've said you know where's the laptop and you have to try and find one rapidly and then the accounts aren't set up so what you do you give everybody you give the person full rights to pretty much everything because you think oh that's going to give me a bit of breathing space and i'll revert back later but you never do revert back six months down the line they send an administrator in the account system etc etc wherever they work so the thing so you'll recognize what happens within the business you'll recognize that first day is important when you go home and see speak to your partner your wife your husband whoever it may be and they say how was your first day say shocking why is that well i've done nothing got there at 10 went to costa for two hours um i then asked to go to lunch which i just wandered around the streets and then they said go home at half three see you tomorrow at 10. so well who did you meet well, pretty much nobody you should be turning up and your first week says right 10 o'clock this is what you do should be in your calendar you should be able to log on all you should be putting in maybe is your mobile telephone number and your calendar gets already filled up you you should be able to log in it just doesn't happen so the thing we've done as a business and some of you will know some of you won't in Malta we've got the development tile so we've got the guys there who, who are development and devops they have created systems for banking i gave accounts so it's sort of irrelevant what industries and what verticals they're in but there is relevancy on which i'll come back to in a little while on um, the compliance side of things which is where the security comes in which is clearly very very important nowadays well it always has been um, so this is where we've developed systems with active directory that link in to the account system link in to other using apis using other systems uh, that that person will be utilizing um, and so when someone's employed or given an offer that they've accepted it comes down into the system the approver who would tend to be the manager will say what their job role is that their job role is where the the accesses are done the accounts are automatically produced with the naming conventions that those accounts have with active directory with salesforce etc etc with the right security within it and the thing goes down to procurement say we need a laptop we need a screen we need a keyboard or whatever it may be so there's eight weeks or four weeks whatever it may be that's done service desk tickets raised this is all automated yeah so two weeks beforehand bang everything's on the desk we're all ready yeah and then that will leave the managers time on the onboarding processes that you should have as a business because it's vital that you might not have but think of you nearly all these participants i can see are managers yeah think yourself right that first day i'll just start filling up the calendar and i'll invite people yeah cultural induction at 10 11 meet the team 12 someone's going to take to lunch and show you a certain area whatever it may be but that back end side of it has worked perfectly it's seamless so the person joins they've got the right access they've got their emails they've got everything that they need 
to start and engage straight away. So their first day is fantastic. Their first day, they leave and say, everything was ready for me. I had a really productive day. I know when I'm meant to be really starting the normal job. I know when the training is. I've got the lot. The company you work for looks superb and the new recruit thinks this is a business I really want to work for. They're not phoning up the recruitment agent saying, God, what have you sent me to? This is terrible. It, it doesn't happen. So this is all done automatically. Um, so I'm going to pass this on to Jürgen, actually. So you've got the fear of what the onboarding system does. What was that, Frank? Yeah, we're going to be Frank. We're going to show you that now. Answer that question. Frank's asking, how can you automate a lot of this? Because a lot of this you have to go to separate accounts. Right, okay. So, because quite a lot of these are talking about process. Yeah, I've got that, Frank. Fine. Uh, Jurgen will, um, will go through that now. So, Jurgen, if you can go through how the systems work for when it's activated. And so, it's activated, I'm assuming, Jurgen, when a HR. Yes. Take a new account on, a new person on, yeah? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Peter. Uh, good morning, London. Good morning, good afternoon, Malta. Uh, thank you for joining us in this webinar. So, uh, the scenario that Peter described uh, renders many, many issues, all right? Um, so, there's lots of accountability, all right? Accounts are created in a rush on the first day, uh, usually with no auditing or approval whatsoever. Okay, you have a lack of consistency when it's all manual because no one knows exactly what to grant for the new recruits. All right, there's a lack of engagement experience and lack of focus. So these are some statistics which Peter has already has already mentioned. Okay, uh, it's good to point out that improving your onboarding process and automating it can improve the retention rate as much as 2%. So, with Sure Stuff, with FGS Sure Stuff, um, with the solution that we have uh, developed, you can manage all your identities in one place. The identities can either be of full time employees, okay, or even your part time maintenance stuff, okay, so not necessarily people who have um, domain accounts in your, in your Active Directory. The system syncs all its employee data with other popular systems such as Active Directory. Okay, so that if something changes in sure stuff, such as the surname of someone, it, this change is reflected on all the connected systems. Okay, through this sure stuff system, you can also grant or revoke accesses for your employees, either yourself or allow them, allow the employees to request it themselves through a customer portal. For these requests are then approved through through an approval portal. Okay, um, then you can also have like pre-approved list of accesses, which can be created at any organizational tier, such as for example, let's say someone's joining the DevOps department, they will immediately get access to A and B. We also integrate with popular HR systems, so that the HR system will still remain the main entry point for new onboarding of stuff. And changes in your HR system are then reflected in sure stuff, and which in turn sure stuff updates all the other systems. Everything is audited, and logs are also exportable to SIEM for your sec security information and event management system. And accounts can be scheduled to terminate automatically on all on an agreed termination date, okay, with all access being revoked. And that way, you're not concerned, you know, without leave, with, with leaving any accesses pending. Sure stuff is strongly tied to Active Directory. And for our Linux customers, we also offer integration with Linux domains as well. Fields can either be removed or added to the identity to accommodate the customer's needs or, for example, GDPR requirements. The auditing allows one to export the reports to popular formats. Okay, and you get, can get to know what happened to a particular identity against a particular timeline. The sure stuff framework allows us to be very flexible and become compatible with various other third party systems. So that automation can happen. Also security is uh, another key factor. Okay, so 
trust that allows the management of various applications from one place, thus hiding the complexity of this secure application and therefore reducing the risk. Changes can either be approved or can either be approved on request or uh, be pre-approved. And there are multiple views and roles on the system, such as, for example, a view for the HR team and another view for the operations team. Jürgen, so I've just had a question yeah. from one of the banking clients in London. They do a two week, everyone has to take two weeks off a year in a block, so they can, they're, they're, they can be audited. During that period, they're not allowed logins, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Yeah. Is that something we could do here where we could uh, close their account down but keep it it's still there? I think that's what the question is. So what can you do to someone who so has to go off for two weeks? Because that, in the banking world, that, that's very common. Yes, you can, you can block access uh, on a future date, okay, at a future date, and yeah. then re-enable it, re it accordingly. And that would block on all the systems. That would that would one click of a button, will it, on all the systems? Yes, that's it. Oh, brilliant. Charles, thanks for the question. So carry on, Jürgen. Okay, so the solution is fully customizable. It can integrate with various systems, such as Active Directory, for example, where the Active Directory account can be created automatically uh, with default security groups as defined in their pre-approved list. The account can also be disabled, enabled, unlocked, and the password reset all through the user stuff portal. And you can have also AD security groups that are added or removed automatically when a person goes through a sure stuff move scenario, for example, in a promotion scenario. And also the active directory account is terminated automatically during offboarding. Also, we have, for example, G Suite or Office 365 integration where the email license is automatically assigned. And you can have various options, such as to archive the mailbox or share it. Also, we have a, we offer API integration to various systems, especially to those systems that expose APIs for the mani manipulation of their logins and accesses. If not possible through APIs, you can directly do it on the application database. We also offer automatic SSH access to Linux systems with predefined SSH policies to control where a person can log on to and which roles they can have. Okay. This application can also come with the purchase the customer and approval portal options, okay, whereby the employees can access, can request um, for extra access or for access to be revoked. And these requests are then approved by the department manager or the service owner in an ITSM session, okay, um, or else be declined. So this here shows the integration with the, with the Linux through free IPA, okay, where we can, through various uh, policy options, we can do host-based access control and enforcement. This is for the uh, Linux, Linux houses. Okay, this, these are the main areas on sure stuff, where you have the identities, where you one can store, add new identities, or update or terminate terminate existing ones. Identities, sorry, yeah, to bring yeah. it into the real world, identities are person, aren't they? Yes, yes, identities are person. Yeah, okay. Either full-time full employees or, or part-time employees, not necessarily yeah. people with, with uh, system accounts. Yeah. Right, okay, yeah. You also have the sync report, okay, where you can choose to commit or decline sensitive changes. For example, a change in surname of someone, ensure stuff, will trigger a change in login and email, because usually the login and email carry the surname of the employee. Okay, so if the surname is changed, is changed, uh, sure stuff asks you to confirm whether you want to change the login and email of the person automatically. And you have also a content and management system where you can um, define your organizational tiers, such as, for example, organization, department, unit, team, sub-team. You can change the name of these as well and change the, the manager. Uh, for example, you can change office names or telephone pools assigned to those offices, engagement types and positions.
So in short stuff, you can uh, update the employees with ease, okay? So you have various fields that describe your identity. These fields can be chosen by you as the customer. All right, we're quite flexible in that regard. And with the click of a button, you can terminate a customer, uh, sorry, an employee, or update an employee, and all the updates are synced to the connected systems. Or else you can choose to bulk update. Say, for example, you uh, want to rename the position DevOps engineer to systems engineer. What you do is you go through the CMS, rename, rename that title from DevOps engineer to systems engineer. Sure stuff will um, automatically get all the people that currently have the old title, and it will tell you to approve or decline the change to the new title. This will update the title in short stuff and also any systems that have a title field for that person. So, for example, in Active Directory, we have a title field. Um, we have the title field so that automatically updated for each of these identities. Also, through the Sure Stuff portal, you can get, uh, you are able to do day to day operations, uh, which you usually do through the Active Directory console. Okay, so Sure Stuff allows you uh, not to grant extra admin access, Active Directory admin access to your employees. Okay, and Sure Stuff will, will, uh, enable you to assign or unassign security groups and do extra Active Directory operation without having the need to access the Active Directory console. Okay, this is done for security purposes and also for ease of use of Active Directory. So this hides the complexity of Active Directory by showing you um, various day-to-day -day operations at the click of a button. Okay, and here you can assign um, new services, unlock, through Active Directory, unlock uh, Active Directory accounts, enable slash disable them, or reset the ID password as well. So, in short stuff, we also have a mechanism of reconciliation. So, what it does here, sure stuff, it has a background worker process which goes through all the connected systems and see that there are no extra rights or extra accounts that have not been registered in sure stuff. And sure stuff will highlight them in these reports. And then you can choose to either remediate these manually or for sure stuff to resolve them for you in an auto uh, remediation feature. Also, sure stuff integrates with Jira, whereby tickets can be created automatically on Jira and you can follow up these tickets. So, for example, uh, you need to prepare a computer, for example, for the new onboarding, for the new onboarding of stuff. And through this Jira ticket, you can follow up this provisioning of the new computer until the ticket is closed. Also, in short stuff, we have the business logic layer. This is done through our own orchestration tool, whereby the business process is defined in a, in a workflow, a workflow in a diagrammatic flow, which can easily be changed and moved around if your business logic changes. Or say, for example, the connected system has undergone a new release and you want to update the integration yourself. You can easily do it through this diagrammatic flow. Okay, if you... If you have any questions, please do contact us and do contact us for any of your uh, about any of your business processes automation needs. We can conduct a free audit for you, or you can email us at info info at fgs.co.uk. Well, Jurgen, thanks ever so much for that, guys. That was more on the technical side of it, and I hope you. I'm sure all the ones I can see on the list would understand that. Uh, just so. We really want to be clear here. This is on the security side. You get the right access when you join. It's not a rush when you turn up. And so service desk just give you any access you, they can just so you can get working. But also when you leave, you can have that account just locked down straight away. Just one click and it locks it down on all your systems. Yeah, that are connected to this. Just a click, bang, lock down the lock. Now we've had incidents in both banking and in iGaming um, 
where the regulator have sent somebody like PwC to do their annual or two yearly audit. And uh, they've looked at it and said, who are these people? That's an easy one that are on your system. Where do they work? And they regularly find people who have left on systems. People who can come in, dial in or whatever we do nowadays, don't dial in, but we you come in, have a look, do what they like and go back out. Yeah. And this is so common. So common. With this system, you haven't got that issue. As soon as they leave, bang, HR, whoever it is, just bang, it's stopped. All the stuff's there for audit purposes and the account is stopped. Now, think about it in licensing as well. If you've got a load of accounts that are still open and you're paying per license, you're paying for those. You're just throwing money away. These people have left. Close these accounts down. Pay for what you use, not for what you don't use. And it's so it's security side. The auditors love it. The regulators love it. IT department make it simple because bang, it's done. You're working with HR. But to me, more importantly, they're spin-offs. That person who joins thinks this is a slick company. This is who I want to work for. And these are the people that I'm going to work hard for. So. Uh, and they, and they stay longer. The proof is out there. The research of these people have a good first day, a good industry first week. They're going to stay there longer. And those cost savings are huge. So many organisations now, 50, 60, 70, 80 percent of their costs are on staff. If you rotate them around like a merry-go-round, those your company's not going to do as well and your costs are going to go up. So, so. Ladies, there are ladies on there, gentlemen from, from Malta and uh, from the UK, really appreciate you joining us. Uh, and I hope you've got something from it. Uh, and so until the next one that we have, which is the last one in this series, um, on Thursday, same time, that's about uh, security. It'd be great if you could join that as well. And that's the last one in this series it will be so we'll be contacting you regarding this we'll also be sending out copies of the slideshow here um, if you want any demonstrations on how this works we've got really good demos how they work um, with linux and with uh, ad etc 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 we can talk you through it and we can go through it so all right then guys thank you very much and uh, we will catch up with you thursday cheers bye